farmers are very susceptible to climate change and climate variability because they are uh, producing uh, at the margins of agricultural land. They are used to variation in weather, but there will be more droughts, there will be more floods, there will be more heat events that will affect crops. And of course, it's the, far, the poor farmers that are the most susceptible to that. Agriculture contributes about one third of the emissions of greenhouse gases that will cause climate change. Uh, about half of that comes through forest clearing, cutting down of forests, shifting cultivation. And half of that, the emission of greenhouse gases from the use of nitrogen fertilizers, from uh, cattle that emits methane, and from rice paddies that also emit methane. Agriculture is, of course, very sensitive to changes in climate. And we know that there has been a number of droughts over decades, especially in the Sahel region. And we see droughts on the Horn of Africa happening nowadays almost every year. The prediction is that the areas that are dry will probably get drier. Other areas will get wetter, but the variability in rainfall is very difficult to estimate from a climate perspective. And that's one of the weak points in the climate model predictions today. Uh, currently about 500 million people live in areas of water scarcity. And it's been estimated that that number will increase to 4 billion, almost half the world's population by 2050. This will, of course, affect the agricultural sector especially, since the agricultural sector today uses 70% of the world's fresh water. And with variable rainfall and lack of water resources, depletion of groundwater for irrigation, the question of water is, of course, of crucial importance for the future developments. It's very clear that both the temperature and rainfall variability will increase. So you cannot only develop new uh, seeds, new cultivars for a drier climate. You also have to develop cultivars that can deal with the variable climate because some years it will be wetter, some years it will be drier. We also have to focus not only on increasing production, but we also have to focus on decreasing losses between uh, harvest at the farm and the consumption in the household. Uh, there are lots of things that can be done with regard to post-harvest losses. Avoid fungal infection during storage, uh, ensure efficient uh, road transport to the consumers, and also educate the consumers to use the food more efficiently. We need to look at the entire food chain and food security, not only agricultural production. And the impact of climate change there are, is very uncertain, but all the model results, whichever model you show, in most areas there will be a decrease in agricultural production. There are a number of studies that have looked at projected possible decreases in uh, crop production. And they all show that irrigated crops will be hit the hardest uh, because there won't be sufficient water for them with decreases of 30% for irrigated uh, wheat and 15% for irrigated rice. And this is at the same time as we need to increase production because of the growing population. And especially child malnutrition is very serious. And it's estimated that um, child malnutrition will increase by 20% until 2050 as compared to if there was no climate change. In a recent report by the International Food Policy Research Institute, for example, it's been estimated that about $7 billion are needed for adaptation of the agricultural production systems. And they conclude that, for example, for Africa, the most important thing is to expand the road network so that farmers have good access to, to the markets and can have both import of fertilizers, uh, new seed varieties, and export the production that they have to marketplaces in the vicinity. 
75% uh, of the population in developing countries are still living in rural communities, but we know that a large number of people are moving to the cities. Uh, the number of people living in cities have uh, globally now exceeded uh, 50%. But in developing countries, most of the people live uh, in the countryside. And of course, they have to produce food, not only for their own survival, but they have to produce food also for the cities.